Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. I'm joined this week by Nicole Dines and Paul Stroh. Nicole, um, what have you been watching this week? Well, it's been a good week for Italian regeneration. We have talked about regeneration in Italy, especially in Milan, um, a few times, but this has been a particularly busy week. And uh, two companies, CPP Investment, which is a huge Canadian pension fund, and Lendlease, which is a big Australian company, have joined forces investing 200 million euros each into a new innovation hub. It's called MIND, which is an acronym for Milan Innovation District. And it's going to become, guess what, a mixed uh, use hub with this will be a new university campus, um, lots of technology labs. So it's very much focused on life sciences, but it will also, you know, in the new uh, trend of having an integrated district. You also have residential, retail, um, other offices, and um, and obviously a lot of green spaces is all going to be sustainable. It's interesting because it's the first investment in Italy by CPP Investments, which has 40 billion euros under management, and about 10% of that is going to be devoted to real estate investments. And they said that this is the first, but by no means the last, and they want to look into logistics in Italy as well. Regeneration is not only happening in Milan, it's also happening in Rome. And uh, there was a really interesting project called Campo Urbano, which means urban campus, which has won the Reinventing Cities competition in Rome. And as it's happened before in Milan, it's a whole regeneration happening around the disused railway area in the Tuscolana district of Rome. And again, it's going to be an integrated district with residential offices, labs and retail to sort of bring back to life an area that's been very much neglected for many decades. And again, uh, there's another interesting project in Genoa, um, which was originally uh, planned by Renzo Piano, the Italian architect that designed the Shard in London and and the new Genoa Bridge. This company called CDS Holding um, has paid 260 million euros for the land just by the harbour and it's going to become a new mixed-use district with a park, new moorings for boats, flats, offices, student housing and retail and a new sports stadium and the whole thing should be done by the end of 2023. It's all going to be sustainable and green. And that's for Italy but going back to the UK in London, I thought it was interesting uh, this announcement by the National Gallery in Trafalgar Square, the museum. An empty courtyard has been transformed into a seven-floor office for curators, um, designers and staff and over 250 people will be able to work there. It's called One Gallery Hub. It's got exposed brickwork. It looks very good. It's got big windows. You can be able to open the windows, have nice views over the square. So it's very much a sort of healthy, pleasant environment to work in. So it really chimes with the lure people back to the office. And it also chimes with the Mayor of London campaign to do infills, to sort of build wherever it's possible, including courtyards, backyards, gardens, uh, and so on, in order to maximise space in central London, where, as we know, it's much in demand. And in the UK as well, I thought it was really interesting announcement by REBA, the Royal Institute of British Architects, that is really campaigning for less demolition and uh, more repurposing of building. They're saying that 50,000 buildings a year in the UK are demolished. And if they're produces 126 million tons of waste, which is two thirds, amazingly, of the total waste produced in the UK. So they're saying the government should legislate. There's a new building strategy that's going to be published very soon by the government. They say it should include a presumption against demolition to encourage people to refurbish existing buildings to calculate the total impact of, of what they do on the environment. And they're also asking for the government to scrap VAT uh, on refurbishing projects in order to obviously make it cheaper to refurbish and encourage people to do so. Um, so they, they, they say that the government should really start seeing buildings as energy that needs to be used. So it'd be interesting to see what the response to, of the government is to that to that appeal. Yes, I think that focus on embedded carbon is going to be a much, much bigger story going forward. And it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in the markets across Europe. I noticed also John Lewis in the UK was planning to build 10,000 rental homes using some new sites, but 70% will be built on existing sites, um, such as department store car parks, above Waitrose supermarkets, next to distribution centres. So another example there of repurposing some retail areas towards residential. On the PropTech side, Pi Labs were in the headlines, firstly hiring Andrew Bohm as research and strategy partner, um, but also investing in Europe's largest robotics marketplace platform called Waku Robotics, a specialist in AI-powered software and expertise for robot automation, specifically in the manufacturing and logistics sectors. So picking up there on two growth trends of technology and logistics. Paul, what have you been watching? Uh, well, I've been looking at logistics again. First off, property investment manager AEW announced it has acquired the Copenhagen Cargo Centre at the Danish capital's main airport from 
um, capital. It's a specialised logistics asset in that it's an airside facility right next to the airport's runways. The assets have got a, a total letable area of 26,500 square metres and tenants including DHL and Post Nord. And this plan's approved there for a, a new 5,000 square metre warehouse. On the other side of the world, and this goes back to the robotics theme that you mentioned, uh, AXA Investment Management has acquired the world's first automated logistics facility, the Moore Bank Logistics precinct in Sydney with partners, Australian Super, Ivanhoe Cambridge and t and logistics developer Logos. Uh, and they've paid the equivalent of just over a billion euros for that. Uh, it's a huge asset at 243 hectares located in Western Sydney, and it'll be developed into a high quality warehousing precinct with 850,000 square metres of logistics. On completion in 2026, the precinct will have an end value of uh, about 2.5 billion Euros. AXA said the acquisition breaks new ground technologically and with regard to its ESG credentials uh, because of the full automation as well as energy and water saving technologies. Currently, AXA manages uh, 3.1 billion uh, euros of logistics assets in Europe, 900 million uh, in the US and 800 million in Asia, Asia Pacific. So this will be a major expansion for it there. Then Madrid-based private equity property manager Azora and PGIM Real Estate have launched a, a Spain-focused last mile logistics joint venture. The JV is claimed to be the first pure play investment vehicle focused on last mile logistics in Spain. Uh, it'll be funded with 75 million in initial equity commitments, which with uh, hearing will give them 150 million to spend over the next two to three years. Targets are going to be last mile logistics opportunities in the first ring of uh, Spain's major cities, specifically um, Madrid, Barcelona and Valencia. Uh, it might seem that they're late to, late to the logistics party, but the, the JV said in a statement that demand for high quality last mile logistics in the Spanish market has become even more apparent. Spain's got a historically low e-commerce uh, penetration rate and the JV said that even before COVID, that was expected to grow by 11% per annum. But with COVID and the new focus on nearshoring and improving supply chains, they think there'll be even more demand. Lastly, Oxford Properties Group uh, and Logistics Capital Partners have formed a new co-investment joint venture to acquire a 734-acre site near Birmingham in the UK, which they'll develop into a major new 743,000 square metre logistics hub with associated rail freight terminal known as West Midlands Interchange. Oxford and LCP will jointly invest uh, about a billion um, pounds, Oxford providing the majority of the capital. The uh, scheme already has planning consent. The first buildings uh, will start on site in 2022, uh, ready for occupation in 2023. Yes, logistics was definitely dominating the headlines again this week. It was also a busy week for People Moves, um, with Colliers International planning a significant expansion of its EMEA cross-border capital markets team, aiming to hire 120 additional senior capital markets experts by the end of 2022, um, and also announcing the appointment of Luke Dawson as Managing Director, EMEA cross-border capital markets, an expanding role for Richard Dival, as well as Damien Harrington moving to a global role, and Monica reiska Volinska taking over from Luke as CEO of Central and Eastern Europe. Um, so congratulations to all on the promotions. Um, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Nicole. Um, thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again next week for our regular roundup of the Weekend Real Assets.